Good morning. Today is May 27th, 2023. And I had a vision last night as I was praying. Um, I rolled over and I told my husband about it and he goes, what do you think it means? And uh, I think I know I've looked up a few verses, but I don't want to say that I know the whole interpretation because the Bible says we prophesy in part. So um, I'm not sure who this is for, but this is what I saw. I was in the middle of a prayer and suddenly I could see in my mind's eye a man walking. I was, it was as if I was like sitting behind him on a road, watching him walk away from behind. And as I was watching him, he was wearing, um, I didn't see what he was wearing up top, but I could just really see his back and his legs. And he was wearing some kind of shorts. And the leg from my right, this leg, watching him from behind, this leg on the right was um, strong and uh, very healthy looking and almost illuminated, um, very bright. And he had a steady gait on the right side. But on the left side, his leg and foot was almost gnarled and it was very, um, it was very dark and hairy and his foot was larger and uh, disformed on the left side. <coughs> and even though he was trying to walk a good straight walk down this path, the right side, he was successful, but on his left side, it was such a chore and so difficult. And, and it was, if I hadn't seen the, the, the fact that both of these legs had connected to the same body, I would never have thought that the legs belonged to the same person. And I just watched, it, it wasn't a long vision. It was maybe, I don't know, I, I can never really tell, uh, maybe 10 seconds long, just watching him try to walk. And after it was over, I just kept, I was just laying there, just still praying and just thinking, Lord, what, what was that? What was that? And I did not get a firm, definite answer. Um, sometimes he'll speak and sometimes he just gives me the picture and that's it. But what I, what was impressed upon my spirit, I believe, and, and I could be wrong, but it, it seemed to me that this man was trying to walk with one foot walking with the Lord and then the other in the world. And that's why this one was deformed and dark and unable to support him. I mean, it, it the leg just he was, it was almost like it was, um, like an off balance, dark crutch of a leg. It was not, it didn't work right. It was crooked. It was twisted. It was dark. And so he was trying to walk straight ahead, trying to walk a good walk, but he couldn't, he could not walk right. And so I, this morning I got up and usually I like to sleep on these things because if the next day I don't remember them, um, then usually I chalk it up to like a, a dream or something, but this was still, I could still clearly see it. Um, so I was looking up Bible verses on walking, what the Bible says about walking. 
And a couple of them stood out to me and I'll read them to you. Um, one was Deuteronomy something 33, 533. It says, you shall walk in all the way which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live and that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you will possess. And it struck me because this guy was walking partial way. Obviously, when you're walking all the way with God, you know, your gait is going to be steady and true and the same. He was half and half. And so he wasn't walking in all his ways. He was walking with half, half his ways. And that shows up in your walk. And the Bible says um, a lot about those you know, it's spiritual adultery to walk halfway with God and halfway in the world. Jesus says that it's better to be cold, spiritually cold, than being lukewarm. Because when you're lukewarm, it's, it's like apathy. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I live in sin. So Jesus would prefer that you didn't even claim to be a Christian and just be full-fledged in your sin <clears throat> than claiming that you have a relationship with the Lord, but you live like you're walking in the world and like you don't really believe that holiness is required of you. And if you have Jesus residing in your heart, you want to be holy. You don't have a desire to go sleeping around. You don't have the desire to go be drinking to excess and partying and dressing half naked and being in the world. You're, you're, you're convicted of those things and you find triumph in Jesus. Otherwise, what did he come down for? What did he die for? Yes, he died for our sins, but he also died to overcome the world and give us that power against those sins. And if you're really seeking the Lord, you're not perfect. But those things don't draw you in anymore. Those things, you you see the wickedness for what it is and you don't want to be part of it anymore. So um, I, I guess this message is just to really encourage anybody who might still be walking on the fence, but... I'm sure you've heard before, the devil owns the fence. There's no fence. There's no lukewarm Christianity. Jesus says the lukewarm Christians will be spat out of his mouth, meaning they're not going to go to heaven. A lot of Christians are not going to go to heaven. You don't just say a prayer and then automatically you're saved forever. There's, there's a born again requirement and a life lived for God that the Lord that's what the Lord wants. He wants your whole heart. He wants to be Lord of your life. Jesus says, Lord, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but not do as I say? If you say Jesus is Lord of your life, you're obeying him. You're doing what he says. You are getting closer to him. You want him to have the ultimate say over everything that you do because you know that his lordship over your life is what's best. So I really encourage you today to get your feet out of the world. Ladies, summertime's coming up. Don't be running around half naked. If it's something that you wouldn't wear to church, you probably shouldn't be in it. I, I can't believe I was saying this, but like a couple years ago at church, I was watching our youth girls with their midriffs coming into church, their bras hanging out at church, short little shorts at church. And I'm like, what has happened? What has happened to the world? Be The Bible commands modesty. And you know what? Like, Sometimes there are super cute outfits that I'm like, man, I still, I'm still in pretty good shape. 
that would look probably pretty cute, but I don't do it because I don't want to stumble my brothers. I don't want to, um, it's a form of pride. Just so you know, if you're walking around half naked, it's because you like to show off what you've got and that's pride. It, it's like saying, hey, I like the way my skin looks. I think that I look really good like this and I want everyone else to see how good I look. And it's also a non-selection of who you're allowing into your um, sexual space. If you've got your cleavage hanging out, if you've got your upper thighs and your midriff hanging out, you are putting your sexuality on display for anybody passing by. And that's not a good thing. You want to protect yourself from any guy who would come your way and mean you harm. If you're putting your sexual goods on display like that, any guy who allows his eye to be his uh, lustful guide is gonna be directing his attention at you. And he doesn't want you because you're a godly woman. He can't see your heart. He can partially see your heart because the way you dress arises from the condition of your heart and your relationship with God. So if you are dressing in a manner that does not please the Lord, it opens you up to potential harm by the men out there who are like sexual predators. They're lusting after you with their eyes they're going to come at you with whatever you want to hear so that they can get what they want from you, which sexually is ultimately a piece of your soul. Because when you are one flesh with someone, you are intertwining your soul with theirs. And ladies, you've got to be very careful who you allow into your soul. Because that belongs to the Lord and your husband alone, alone. The world will tell you different. The world will tell you different. Satan will tell you different because he wants you to commit spiritual adultery and he wants everyone around you to commit spiritual adultery because when people are in disobedience to the Lord, it opens them up to great harm. He wants to hurt you. Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That, that man that directs his attention at you because of the provocative way that you're dressing, he's not going to want to marry you, but he'll be with you long enough to distract you and keep you off track from finding the godly man that the Lord has for you, which is part of the point of sexual immorality. If Satan can keep you busy, busy, busy with all these people who do not care about your soul and the will of God for your life, then that's less time that you are with the one that God has called you to be with. Or maybe you miss them altogether because you were so busy in your sin and looking good and being prideful and disobedient to the Lord. So my Christian ladies and men too, boys, men, I, I've seen you do the same thing. You've been working out, you got your abs. Well, that's nice. But when you are showing those things off to the opposite sex, it's the same thing. You are trying to lure them and get them to lust with their eyes, or you want attention because you're prideful. It all boils down to pride. So please, it's, it's good to take care of your body, but your body is the Lord's.
the Bible says that you're to present your body as a living sacrifice because that is your, that is your um, reasonable service. Meaning if Jesus died sacrificing his body for us, we need to sacrificially obey him with our bodies. And he says, modesty. He says, cover up. He says, wait on the Lord. He says that we are his. So next time you get dressed, next time you go to the gym, next time you go to the beach, is what you're wearing pleasing to the Lord? Is what you're wearing loving thy neighbor as thyself and protecting other people? One of my favorite quotes uh, I heard about modesty from a woman was, always dress the way you would want another woman to dress around your husband. Would you want your man or your woman hanging out with a half naked person or not even half naked, just showing a little more than you're supposed to show would you want your spouse around that? The answer is no, because you want your spouse guarded. You know, maybe you haven't even met them yet because they're so distracted by other people and their bodies. And we're supposed to protect one another. We're supposed to love one another the way we want to be loved. You know, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want my husband to go somewhere with just a pair of shorts on because he's my husband only I should see that right and he wouldn't want me go going to the beach in a bikini because he doesn't want other men to see what only he should see so you know it it's tempting it's tempting you know especially when you are taking care of your body that's a great thing but your body is the Lord's and your body is your spouses and that's it don't let the world tell you any different get your feet out of the world get your feet out of the world who wants your feet in the world Satan why because he wants to trip you up and get you to disobey